Hey guys, what's going on? Michael Lindell here, and I'm excited that you guys are taking up our opportunity to join us, to join us on this new episode, or this new episode of Women and Money. Yes, Women and Money. This is a brand new segment that we added to the program uh, because there's so many women out there that's looking for a way out of this financial crunch. You know, many women are single mothers. Many women are, you know, married with men who aren't providing. Um, there are women out there that is just looking for, you know, some additional resources, different ways in which they can build their wealth. In this episode, in this episode, we're going to talk about, you know, should women, should women, because this is a topic of discussion, should women become entrepreneurs? Should women become entrepreneurs? And some people may say, well, women should not be entrepreneurs. They should, you know, be women. And they some people feel like they should stay at home and take care of the home. And some men, some men uh, truly believe that some women should work and it should be a two way street. You know, the they both should work and they both should work on building a family. Some the men, some men feel like they should stay home and cook. I had a wonderful, wonderful conversation with um, a guy that was okay with it. That was okay with it, right? But society goes back and forth. So in this episode, in this particular piece here, we're gonna discuss, should women become entrepreneurs? And if that is the case, what should women do right now to sustain themselves in this particular market? If you guys have not already done so, I want you guys to like and subscribe to my channel because that's the only way in which I can continue doing these videos. I have to, the algorithm have to work for me guys. So please, please, please just hit that like button right down there. Um, or, you know, share this with your family and friends or, and share with your family and friends, right? Uh, so should women do that? Should, should, should women become entrepreneurs? Should women become entrepreneurs? The answer for me, the answer for me and most of my friends that I know is going to definitely say, Michael is going to say, Yes. And so women should become entrepreneurs for a number of reasons, right? And number one, number one, we have this thing, right, in America right now where 76% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. All right. Paycheck to paycheck. So if 76% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck, then that's letting us know that almost near 80% or let's just go let's back, let's go back behind this thing and let's just say 20% or 24%. Only 24% of Americans are able, are able to take care of their expenses without feeling drained. So the 300 million Americans, almost 400 million Americans that reside in the United States and only 24 percent of those folks can 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 can, you know, buy things and, and not feel the crunch. The male is this data right here is showing us that the man doesn't have the means, doesn't have the ability to take care of homes another reason why i feel like women should do this by themselves or, or not by themselves but become entrepreneurs is because in america the divorce rate in america is 50 percent okay this is the divorce rate in america is 50 percent sorry for my sloppy handwriting I tell you guys every week i don't have the best handwriting guys i have doctor handwriting I never wanted to be a doctor but um, 50% divorce rate in America. So this is, again, this is letting us know that half of all divorces that happen in America end in a divorce. So when a, when, when a male and a female, or in this day and age, when, a, when, when married couples just divorce, <laughs> then the wife or the other significant other are left without. So women are left without the additional resources that they need. And most of the time when folks are married, sometimes they have kids and things of that nature. When they divorce, they are then left with the responsibility 
of taking care of the kids. And typically the, the, the children stay with the mother. Right. And especially they stay with the mother if, if the father is the is the breadwinner of the family, because for the most part, for the most part, and not in all cases, but in, mo in the most part, if, if a man is the breadwinner, then he's more busier than the woman. So the so the judge feel more inclined to leave the child with the mother and have the father supplement that um, additional income that's needed to raise the child. Right. But at sometimes it's not enough. And some men don't pay. Now, men, don't get it confused. I, I, I am not a I'm not bashing men, but I'm, I'm doing this episode. I want women to see why they should start taking care of their self, because when when women take care of themselves, the judge see that the women start making more money and it, it, it just removes the system. It removes the system out of marriage. It removes the system out of families. Right now, women have enough money to take care of the child if the child chooses to stay with the mother or if the judge say that the child stay with the mother in this case. Right. So it, it helps both sides. So we know that there's a 50 percent divorce rate in America. This is another reason why women should start their um, entrepreneurship. Another reason why women should start. is because of um, the, the pay gap. Right. So we already understand there's so many, many articles out there that's letting us know that women, women have a pay gap to men. And that data is even stronger, is even stronger for minority women. Right. So if you're a minority woman, then you're significantly seeing a pay gap. If you are African-American in this divorce rate bucket, the, 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 the rate goes from 50 percent to near 60 percent. OK, 60 percent. Right. And this is African-Americans. OK. So we understand that if you're a minority, you definitely, definitely need your own source of income. All right. We talk a lot about this. There's only two paths. There's only two paths to wealth. Either you're going to be a business owner or you're going to be an entrepreneur. OK. And we talk about the quadrants. OK. We could talk about the quadrant for a second here. This is why it's so important in America. We live in a capitalistic society. OK, either you can be an employee. You can be a sole proprietor. You can be a business owner or you can be an investor. This right here is where wealth lies. This right here is where dependency lies. OK, you're dependent upon the government. OK. And you are independent in this bucket. OK, again, sorry for the sorry, sloppy handwriting, but either you can be dependent, you can be an, a, a, an employee or you can be a sole proprietor or you can be independent and be a business owner or become an investor. Right. So I want you guys to take this thing. I want you women out there. If you guys, if you women out there are listening to this episode, to this podcast, to everybody that's out there on Spotify, uh, on SoundCloud, Apple, 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 um, Apple, um, Apple, whatever podcasts. Right. I want you guys to understand one thing that you have an opportunity to change the landscape of your life. You don't need government to do it. You don't need another man to, to provide for you. Right. The, the, I, and I'm not saying that you should start a business just because you want to be superior to a man. Right. Because we understand that we all understand that a man should be um, the, the provider of the family for the most part. I'm not saying that women cannot support a man, but it's, it's definitely needed for a man to be because that's just how it's always been. It's always been that way since since the beginning of time, since the world was actually created. It was man. It was man. It was man that was uh, given the responsibility to nurture, to provide okay for society and so that's never left however th there can be some change of courses in that and so we have that in a capitalistic society in which we're living in today in america where women um you know there's not enough money men are not making enough money to provide for the family and because a man cannot provide for the family you have women you have women 
that are that's a necessary necessarily needed in society to produce income for themselves because man man cannot do it alone and so because of that reason you have some gaps from a minority perspective which we talked about from a minority perspective we understand that minorities are are, are really getting hit because when a when a uh, when a minority woman goes through a divorce, right, they are really left with the bag. They're really left him holding the bag because man is not there. So women have to take care of their own responsibility. So about 60 percent of all African-American women out there are having to start basically from scratch when they leave their husband. We have the, pen, uh, the, 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 the uh, gender pay gap. The gender pay gap is letting us know that, listen, women are just not making as much as to men. I was reading an article and I think I have it here. Let me see if I can still pull it up here. Let me see. I hope I can still pull this up here because this was a very, very, very interesting article. Here it is. It was published by NBC News and it says black women equal pay day. All right. It says black women work. Check this out. Black women work 579 days to earn what white men earn in 365 days. Now, you guys, you guys can pull out so many different stats and say, oh, it can be this or it can be that or it can be this or it can be that. But look, guys, at the end of the day, we all understand that this is true. We all understand there's an issue that's at play here. And women are just not women are working the same amount of hours. OK, they're they are working the same amount of hours. And but they're just not being compensated the same as as their white um, as a white man. OK. All right. And, 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 and we're talking about African-Americans, but that is also true for white women. White women aren't making what men make, what white men make. OK, so 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 obviously we understand that there is a gap here. The way to bridge this gap, guys, is to understand or women out there is to understand that you cannot operate in this quadrant. Because if you operate in this quadrant, then you are dependent. If you operate in this quadrant of being a business owner or being an investor, then you are you're going to have the most be best chance of becoming independent. So you may say, well, Mike, OK, so I understand all of that. What should I do right now? What should I do right now to build this business or to build my investing career? OK, I always say this is my rule. This is my rule. Number one. Uh, you know, I, I used to say 40 percent, but I'm going to go with 50 percent. 50 percent. OK, should be stored. Of all your money, never leave your first flow of income, never leave the first flow of income. So I am referring to that same job that I'm telling you that you're not getting compensated for. You're not being paid equally. Yes, I'm telling you to still stick it out because you have to understand that listen you you have to you need money right so i'm not saying go to zero i want you to stay where you're at okay i want you to save at least 50 percent if you're in a relationship right now save if you have support right now your baby father or your husband okay if you're single save 50 percent store 50 percent of your income okay the next thing that i want you to do is to take that 50 percent and to start a brokerage account OK, most people online are not giving you guys this information. This is jewels. This is a lot. This is great information. You guys may think that it's trivial, but this is what changes the landscape. This is what tr creates wealth. This is how wealth is created. You can take 50 percent of what you stored and then are going to take that and you're going to store it into a, a van, uh, a brokerage account like a Vanguard. OK, it's a Vanguard. It's like a savings account. OK, you're going to take that saving in that account. OK. You should not invest in anything until you have one hundred thousand dollars in the bank. OK, some of you women out here may think that, oh, OK, so what business am I going to start? Well, you have to find out exactly what you're good at, what you want to what you want to do. You could take the job that you're currently in right now. I always say that it doesn't matter what industry you're, you're currently working on in corporate America right now. You could take any job that you currently do right now and start a business doing that same job. I don't care if you were an executive assistant in corporate America. Guess what? You can be a, an executive system. You can start you a business where you provide assistant work to startups, to business owners, to, to people who need that sort of um, job. 
If you flip fries, if you flip burgers at McDonald's, guess what? My friend, you can start you a restaurant, make you the best damn patties that anyone has ever tasted before. You can do that. All it is is seasoning. You get you the burger, you create you the best seasoning. Guess what? You, my friend, can start you a new type of McDonald's or Burger King. The point that I'm making to you is it doesn't matter where you're at. OK, if, if this is not if you're not unsure about what you want to do, if you just want to invest passively, you can also do that. OK, and if you're going to invest passively, then you want to invest in something. If you're going to invest in passively, invest in stocks. OK, not individual stocks. I do not recommend individual stocks unless you are a pro at investing, but you invest in the S&P 500. OK, so you, you can do a slew of things to grow the nest egg for you and for your family. These are just some tips. These are just some things that you can do right now to get started. If, if you don't know where you want your $100,000 to go, then you take that $100,000 and invest it passively um, inside of real estate, okay? With, if you know somebody that's, that's doing real estate, you can come invest with us. If you don't wanna invest it with us, you could take that $100,000 and put it inside the S&P 500. The S&P 500 does about an 8% return year over year and it says historically have always gone up and if you don't know what the S&P 500 is the S&P 500 is um, it's the top 500 companies that's in America right so you're invested in the top 500 so basically when you invest in the S&P 500 okay you're betting on America as long as America is doing good then the S&P 500 will also do good you're investing in companies like Apple um, you're investing in, in, in the top 500 companies in the freaking United States. So this is what you guys can do or you women can do right now to change the landscape. But you have to start somewhere, guys. And where you're going to start is understanding that. That number one, you're behind the eight ball because. OK, 76 percent of the people that's watching this video right now that are women or people are living paycheck to paycheck. OK. We also understand that, you know, that you have a very high likely chance of being divorced if you are married. 50 percent. If you're African-American watching this, a woman right now, understand that the chances of you being divorced is much higher than the average. You're about 60 percent. OK, we, we understand that pay gap. Women, we, it's not it's not rocket science. Look at any data. Just type in women, the gender pay gap. You're going to see that woman is behind the eight ball. This is why this is why women right now need to start thinking about becoming entrepreneurs start you a facebook group start you uh collaborate with other like-minded women like you okay get your name out there get your brand out there you have to do it now you have to start right now so guys listen this is another episode women and money I want you guys to take heart of this we're going to do this episode every single week for you we're going to try to bring on some other women out here some other women entrepreneurs to give you guys more motivation give you guys more insightful knowledge on how to blow up your business. Um, guys, listen, I want to bring these people on. I want to bring these women on, but I cannot bring these women on, these successful women on until we get this channel to where it needs to be. So I need you guys right now. I want to build a coalition. I'm not doing this for myself. I'm not doing this to profit from this thing. I, my goal for you guys is to really blow your business up. It's to really blow your finances up. It's to, it's to, it's to create a, um, a, a community of like-minded individuals where we can come together and share knowledge and, and share experiences so that we can all collaborate and build business. It doesn't matter if you're black, white, uh, male, female, Asians or whatever, this channel is for everybody and we should all embrace that, all right? So I want you guys to like and subscribe to this channel, share this channel with your friends, share this episode with any woman out there that, that needs support. Um, and, and, and let's get to it, guys. This is another episode of Women & Money. I love you guys and I'll see you guys next time on how to get your money right. All right, peace out guys, love you.